For those of you who are wondering how the code worked for this uh, heat transfer lab, it's producing the temperature values that you see down here and printing out additional asterisks to represent that temperature level graphically as the distance it is above room temperature. So we see that these are still about 40 degrees Celsius, although it's declining. And we're seeing that it's still well above room temperature. So here's how I got to that. First off, I started designing this uh, little application when I had just one thermistor on there. That's the one that's glued to the, uh, to the box. And these are the parameters that go with that thermistor. This R-REF is the uh, reference resistance of the, uh, the thermistor circuit uh, voltage divider. And the thermistor itself has a B value of 3095 and a nominal resistance at 25C of 10,000 ohms. And that T0, 25C, is 25 plus 273 if we put it in degrees Kelvin. Now, later on, I also added that uh, ring uh, lug thermistor that's bolted on to the, to the package. And these are the parameters for it. So a very slightly different reference uh, resistance. A very slightly, well, more than slightly, 3435 versus 3095 difference for the B value calibration coefficient, and still a 10,000 ohm nominal resistance at 25 degrees Celsius, the same T naught. And I've marked each of these with an A5 just to represent the fact that uh, when I connected this new thermistor, I connected it to analog input A5. So in the setup, we start the serial port, wait until it's actually visible so that we make sure that we're actually seeing something, and set the analog read resolution to 16 bits. That's just to make sure that we get as, uh, as high resolution of value as we possibly can. Then each time we go through the loop, we're uh, getting individual input uh, analog read values from A3 and A5. And we're uh, keeping track of this time that we last printed as a static variable so that we can, uh, we can follow along and figure out if it's time to print again yet. So we're going around the loop really quickly. And each time we go around the loop, we're getting a resistance value uh, from the analog read input. Uh, just using Ohm's law to figure out what the resistance was for the thermistor. Then we calculate the temperature based on the uh, relationship for the thermistor and the uh, B value and the T naught and R naught, the reference resistance and the reference temperature. And then we repeat the same thing, but this time doing it for the second thermistor. So we've got two values of temperature. Now, if the current time minus the time that we last printed out a value is greater than some large number here, what's that? Uh, 5,000, so every five seconds, sorry, 5 million, so every five seconds it's going to print out a new value. So we set the last print value equal to whatever the time is now so that we're keeping track of when we last printed, and then just printing out temperature from the one thermocouple, temperature from the second thermocouple, and then this for loop here is going and it's starting at 20, that is nominal room temperature, and going on as long as the value is less than the average of the two measured temperatures, it's incrementing by one. So each of these asterisks that it prints represents about one degree Celsius above room temperature. And then finally it prints an end of line so that it can go on to the next line. And it'll keep going around this loop really quickly, but only every five seconds will it actually print something out. And that's what we're seeing down here on the, uh, on the serial monitor output. So now that we're down to maybe only seven degrees above room temperature, we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven asterisks. 
So we've got a graphical indication in addition to our numerical values. This sketch captures a couple of valuable techniques. One is this checking to see if the serial has uh, been initialized yet. That makes sure that you wait until you actually have all of your code running and your serial port window has opened up before you start printing stuff out so you don't miss anything. The other is keeping track of the time that you last did something so that you can do it again only after a specified amount of time. In this case, I'm testing down here, and that specified amount of time is five seconds. So that can be really useful. One thing to remember, of course, though, is always update the value of when it was that you last did whatever thing it was that you were doing, in this case, printing. Otherwise, you'll, uh, you'll wait uh, for the first one, and then you'll just do it continuously right after that. So I hope that helps explain this code. I bet you can do a better job of coming up with something much more interesting and, and detailed to keep track of the, the data that you're going to get in the lab.